This mini lecture um, is about divisibility rules. Um, and divisibility rules are just some shortcuts um, that can help us determine whether or not a large number um, is divisible by a smaller number. Um, these are uh, rules that are required curriculum for our course. Um, however, they are not to be found anywhere in your textbook. Um, so you want to be sure to keep the notes for this section somewhere where you can find them and refer back to them. Uh, since or tag the video, bookmark it, uh, so you can get back to it uh, since you won't be able to find this material in your textbook. Uh, so the divisibility rules we're going to be looking at today are the rules for the first four uh, prime numbers because uh, we'll be doing a lot of manipulating with these uh, divisibility by primes uh, when we learn how to find common denominators, um, how to reduce fractions. So having some shortcuts for this can help. So the first rule we're going to talk about is the rule for divisibility by 2. Um, and that rule would be that if the number is even, it will divide by 2. Um, now, you may not have ever thought of this before as a divisibility rule, um, but many of you are probably already familiar with the idea that even numbers, um, that being numbers that end in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, um, will divide by 2. Our second divisibility rule is for 3, um, and this is actually a rule that I didn't even know existed in, until I began teaching this course about 14 years ago, um, and I thought it was kind of a fun trick uh, when I learned about this. So the divisibility rule for 3 says that if you take a number and add up all of its digits, um, and those digits add to a multiple of 3, then the original number, that original large number you started with, is also divisible by 3. Um, and here, as soon as we finish going over the rules, we are going to do some examples. So I'll, I'll be showing you a few examples of how that works. Um, our next divisibility rule is, again, one that many of you are already familiar with. Um, if a number ends in a 0 or a 5, then it is divisible by 5. Um, so think of the counting by 5s. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, you'll notice with that a pattern of the numbers ending in 0 and then 5 and then 0 and then 5. Um, so if their multiples all end in 0 and 5, therefore they also divide by 5 if they end in a 0 or a 5. The final rule is the rule for 7s. Um, and some people consider the rule for 7, the shortcut, um, to actually be a longer process than just doing the long division or the short division uh, for 7. And so if you would prefer to just do division to check to see if a number divides by 7, that's certainly fine. Um, but if you like tricks and want to learn the trick, here's the trick for 7. Uh, the trick for 7 is to double the last digit of a number um, and then subtract it from the remaining digits. So we're going to take that last digit of the number we're looking at, chop it off, double it, subtract it from what remains, and then continue to do that. Remove the last digit, double it, subtract, remove, double, subtract, until we get to a remainder um, or a result that, that is, we can determine whether or not it's a multiple of 7. Uh, so if that end result turns out to be a multiple of 7, the original number we began with is also a multiple of 7 or divisible by 7. If the remainder we get is not a multiple of 7, then the large number we began with is also not a multiple of 7 or divisible by 7. So let's take a look at a couple examples of these. First number we're going to look at, um, or the three numbers we're going to be looking at, are 735, 1470, and 972. So looking first at the rule for twos, you'll notice that 1,470 and 972 are both even numbers, since the 1,470 ends in a 0 and the 972 in a 2. Now 735, ending in 5, is an odd number, so it's not going to be divisible by 2. Going on to the rule of threes, we're looking at the sum of the digits. So if we add 7, 3, and 5 together, we get a total of 15. And since 15 is a multiple of, seven, a multiple of 3, 735 is also a multiple of 3. Now notice that the divisibility rule doesn't tell us how many times 3 is going to fit into 735, 
Um, all it does is let us know that dividing by 3 will be successful, that we will end up with a number that does not have a remainder. Doing the same thing here for 1,470, we add 1 plus 4 plus 7, and our result is 12. 12, again, is a multiple of 3, so therefore 1,470 is a multiple of 3. And then our final example, 9 plus 7 plus 2 equals 18, and 18, being a multiple of 3, tells us that 972 is also a multiple of 3. Checking for the rule of fives, we have to look again at only the last digit. 735 ends in a 5, therefore it is divisible by 5. And 1470, ending in 0, is also divisible by 5. But 972, since it ends in a 2, not a 0 or a 5, will not divide evenly by 5. Then our final rule to check is the rule for 7. So we're going to look first at 735. The rule states that we chop off the last digit and double it. So doubling the 5 would give us 10. When we subtract 10 from 73, we get 63. And six, since 63 is the answer to a 7 times table, it is 7 times 9, we know that 63 is a multiple of 7, and therefore 735, our original number, is also a multiple of 7. Checking the number 1470, we chop off the 0 and double it, leaving us with 0 again, and when we subtract 0 from 147, we still get 147. Then we'll do the chopping, doubling again. 7 times 2 is 14. And when we subtract 14 from 14, we get 0. Now 0 is actually a multiple of 7, since it's the answer to the times table 0 times 7. That tells us then that 1,470 is a multiple of 7. And then our final number to check, 972. When we chop off the 2 and double it, we get 4. And subtracting 4 from 97 leaves me with 93. Now I don't know my 7 times tables up that high, uh, so I'm going to do the rule again to see if 93 is a multiple of 7. So I'll double the 3, which gives me 6. And subtracting 6 from 9 leaves me with a remainder of 3. Now since 3 is not a multiple of 7, this tells me that my original number, the 972, is not a multiple of 7. And that is your end of your lesson on divisibility rules.